The best part about man sewing is we are all learning together and paper piecing is incredible. And if you haven't seen my dear friend Violet Craft's abstraction <laughs> patterns, you got to check them out. We are going to learn today from one of the very best experts on paper wow. piecing. Let's get started. <laughs> So what I put together for Rob was his man sewing logo and we made a foundation paper piece padding pattern of Rob's needle. So we're going to work on teaching Rob how to foundation paper piece. Yes. And so that you can all learn with me, if you bounce down into the description below, we have a link for the free pattern printable printed out so that you're ready to follow along as Violet takes us through the steps here. So Rob, have you foundation paper piece before? Did you say successfully paper piece before? <laughs> <laughs> I tried it once and I used the same pattern about 36 times to make a four pointed star and it was still rough. I really, really struggled with a couple of things. I don't even want to tell people the pitfalls. I just want you to show us the successful route. I might chime in, but yeah, I wasn't very good at it. No. That's why you're here. Okay. Please help. Please well, help. I'll talk about the pitfalls while we get to them because okay. I'm sure a lot of people that are watching have tried this before and have possibly run into the same problems that you had. Right. So we're going to talk about how not to have those problems and how to successfully and smoothly go through a foundation paper piece pattern. Fantastic. So first of all, let's talk about foundation paper piece Got patterns. It. So this is what one might look like. This particular pattern has three pieces. We've got the A, B, and C. Not all foundation paper piecing patterns that you buy or download will look the same. Some of them you can kind of see in here. Here's our needle eye. Right. Here's the first part of our bolt, and then the rest of our lightning bolt follows through. Sometimes all of these pieces will be put together in one seamless piece with just some lines, and they'll Sometimes they'll be marked with scissors and sometimes you sort of have to look at it and just guess where you're supposed to cut this template apart depending upon who wrote the pattern. So it's very safe to say this is a very beginner friendly paper piecing pattern. I think so. And that was my goal. <laughs> Got it. Um, when I started to do foundation paper piecing right. patterns, I didn't really have any experience with them. So I was building a pattern that I would know how to put together, Great. which has worked <laughs> for others. <laughs> yes. So I break each one of these pieces out okay. and I add the seam allowance around the outside edges. Got so it. those are all there for you. You don't have to add any of your seam allowances. And then each of my pieces is um, built in order. Okay. This one's A, the section you'll see is B and C. And this will tell you what order you should make them in if you want to follow along with the pattern and put them together in the same order. Perfect. That I recommend. So we start with A, go to B, move to C and so yep. on if we're following a bigger pattern. Awesome. And if you see any of my other patterns, like some of the crazy. Yeah, yeah. You got a cover with you? I do. Such as the Jungle Abstractions Lion. Right. Um, when I take you through this experience, right. <laughs> <laughs> I purposefully choose areas, and in this case, we start down here with the mouth, Okay. that are a little bit, they're not simpler, because once you know this technique, you can do any of it, but they're less intimidating. Got it. So they don't have small pieces in them. You don't look at it and go, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna piece that. I right. build you up to that. Got it. Um, another thing that I'll do is if I have a pattern that uses a ton of background, such as, this guy right here, I'll try to work you through some of these really big background areas first. Oh, just to get your, your feel. And so that you are using the larger pieces of your fabric. This is scrap friendly. Yes. All so right. that you keep all of your scraps as you go. And Got then it. when you get into these smaller pieces, you're picking from all those scraps right. to really have the minimal amount of waste. Got it. Are so we, are we ready there is to start? a little bit of rhyme and reason to like what may look like right. chaos. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're uh, ready to start. I'm, I'm caffeinated. I, I want to make it. Can we start? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, the first thing we're going to do is cut these apart. Um, okay. You do not, these lines right here, the dotted lines, are just marking your seam allowance. Everything that you see that is a solid line is a stitch line or your outside border. Okay. When you go to cut these templates apart, you really don't have to be super right. careful. And while she's cutting uncarefully, I'm going to give you a, a disclaimer with mm -hmm. your... Uh, Oh, that's probably one of my dull cutters, which is perfect for paper. Yes, I was going to say, I use an old rotary cutter and I downgrade my blades once they start nicking the fabric. I put them on my handle that's labored, labeled paper. I have a paper cutter for photographs and stuff. So yep. this is the one we're set up for dealing with paper and fabric today. And you can cut these out with scissors too if you want to, sure. but you don't really have to worry about getting close to your lines because you want a little, when you're putting this the fabric on, you want a little overage. And then after you're completely done, right. you'll trim it all up. Right. So I'll take these and um, just sort of 
trim off some of the really big pieces. We call that whittling. Whittling? <laughs> Whittle it away? <laughs> It's a, it's a man sewing, a sewing term, okay. whittling, whittling <laughs> your pattern down so you're ready to, to work with it. Good. And then we'll put all of our templates in order. Perfect. A, B, and C. Okay. And set these aside. And we're going to start with our A template. Got it. So when you're looking at this template, you'll see that they're numbered in order. A couple of things, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. That is the order that you're going to put your fabric onto this template. One and two together first? One and two together first. Okay. And something else that we're going to notice about these templates is that there are different background prints behind each of the sections. Got it. So in this particular pattern, we have two colors. We've got the red and the white. Right. So our background is red. So everywhere that you see the little bees, you will put your background fabric. Got and it. everywhere that you see the little stars, that is where our white print needs to go. Got it. It's the same on all of your templates all the way through. Perfect. So once you've got your palette, you know where it goes. Got it, okay. got it, got it. So the very first thing, place that we're going to sew is we need to get A1 to A2 together. Okay. Now let's just talk about foundation paper piecing and what it is. Right. It means that we are going to actually be sewing our fabric to this paper. Okay. It's going to be attached to the paper and the side that you see here is actually the back side of your pattern. So if we put these together and look at them, this one is coming from the left to the right, but our final is coming right to left because so the it's reversed. transposed or yes. reversed. Got this it. is the back. So what you see is actually going to be on this side. Because we're going to be stitching right on the lines yep. of the paper. And all of our seam allowances are going to be tucked in between this piece of paper and Got it. our final pattern. Makes sense. Okay. So one and two. One is a white piece, two is a red piece. Now, okay. in some foundation paper piecing patterns, um, you'll be making, say, flying geese. Right. Where they're all the same. Or in the four-pointed four -pointed star, is that right. what you made? Well, kind of. Okay. <laughs> so technically, when you're making a, one of those, you repeat the same thing over and over, like possibly in a circle or in a big, long line. Right. So you can kind of pre-cut a lot of those pieces okay. and have them ready. Some that I've seen is like people will do flying geese in a row, and so they'll have a rainbow pink all the way through. Um, and they'll pre-cut rectangles that right. sort of are going to fit in those areas. And some will have that. Got My it. foundation paper piecing patterns are crazy. Every <laughs> piece, let's be honest, the way they look <laughs> right. is crazy. Every piece is a different size. It runs at a different angle. There's no way to pre-cut for these. Got it. So I just have usually... Um, if I'm working with big yardage, I'll cut off a nine inch strip. That's kind of my go-to. I take a quarter yard long cut. Right. Um, in this case, we just have some scraps here. Okay. We've got some uh, red and we've got some scraps of white and we're gonna use these scraps to cut our pieces. Okay. So the very first one we're doing is A1. Nice. What goes there? What color? The A1 part's gonna be white. That's right. Okay. So here's a piece of fabric. Okay. And we're gonna lay it on there and see if it covers the area that we're trying to cover. That whole little wedge that, that was A1. That whole little wedge. Covered. And we also need to cover at least a quarter of an inch all the way around the outside. Oh, I wonder if that's where I went wrong before. Not because I would like, as I tried to open it, I just would never get to where I was going. Yeah. I yeah. think you have a trick for that I coming as well. I do have a trick for that. But. So what we're going to do is put this fabric <laughs> underneath. And this is a huge piece of fabric. We don't need one this big, but what we're gonna use. Well, start easy. Show, yeah. show us as a phone. Somebody had never done this before. I also always suggest use a much bigger piece than you think you need. Right. Why not? Right. I mean, if at the end of the day it means that you use a tiny bit more fabric, but you have saved yourself the frustration of maybe never coming back to foundation paper piecing. Right, right. It's worth it to have this in guy. the beginning. Yep. Like you'll get better at it. You'll be able to <laughs> judge it closer and you'll be able to get these smaller pieces in later. Right. Just give yourself a lot of room. Okay. So we're gonna give ourselves a lot of room. So we're laying this down and we can see that this generously covers all angles and all seam allowances around the outside edge. Right. I am going to take our handy glue stick here and we're using the lapel stick. You actually pronounce that wrong. It's la appel stick. It's just a misprint on the gotcha. label there. Yeah. La appel. There, yeah. Where's the apostrophe? It's coming. It, it's, <laughs> it's French for glue stick. And so uh, French for man sewing glue stick, la appel stick. I only usually use this on the very first piece, right. and it's just to hold okay. it in place. You could also, a lot of people use a pin, and they will just stick a pin in there. Right. Some of these small pieces, like, then it's going to be hard to fold your paper and to cut so around, around them. It. There's a pin in a Got way. It. And so I will just take this and put a little piece, little glue, on that area. <laughs> the lapel stick can be found in a participating link below. <laughs> 
on here. Okay? I like that trick. Yeah, because I was doing the pin thing and I was that was a, another problem well, I had. Well, and uh, a lot of times it'll shift too. Yeah. Like for some reason when you get the pin in there, right. your fabric will shift underneath right. it. It's so just, I'm ready to sew, yeah, right? Can you start sewing? No. Oh. How many pieces of fabric do you need to sew something together? Two. How many do we have? One. Okay. I was counting the paper. <laughs> Doesn't count. Sorry. So the first seam line that we're going to sew is in between piece one and piece two. Okay. Okay. So we're going to lay this right here. It's called an add a quarter plus ruler. Now okay. I'm using both today. I don't need both. I could do it all with this, but I've just really gotten used to having them both. Okay. Um, the difference is that on the add a quarter ruler, this is a about an eighth of an inch edge, right? It's a little thicker, it's a nice solid piece. Right. This one, the add a quarter plus, has a fine edge here that we're gonna use for folding our paper on. Oh, so there's a benefit to that. Yeah, absolutely. Got it, so a paper um, piece, or if they were getting just one, they'd want the plus, they add, would a, want the add plus. a quarter plus. I've seen people come in and they have the ruler and they'll have a business card or a postcard taped to the top of it so that they can flip this postcard out and use it to crease their paper. This is a lot handier. Okay. Um, the one I carry around in mine is actually the color of my front door. It's there the paint go. swatch. There so I always know it's mine. It's my <laughs> front door. So I'm going to lay this on the line. Between A1 and A2. Between A1 and A2. Got it. And I'm just going to fold the paper back. Aren't they doing a nice job so far? I'm going to let you do something in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to crease that line. I'm not complaining, by the way. Okay, so creased on the line between mm -hmm. A1 and A2. And this is where, if you have done this before, if you've taken a class, that this might be a little different than what you've learned. Right. We are gonna put this on here, our ruler, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut our quarter inch seam allowance okay. before we ever even sew anything. Perfect. Okay. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we now know exactly where this next piece has to line up instead of just sure. guessing. Where that was the problem I was having. I was guessing all the time. And yeah. I was guessing incorrectly, unfortunately. And when you get something that has a tricky angle that goes mm -hmm. in the opposite direction, mm -hmm. it can really change like where that fabric is supposed to go. So A2 is our next piece, and I'm going to just cut off. So still a generous strip. cut. Still a generous cut. Okay. And it's definitely gonna cover. I agree. So we're gonna put it in its home. Okay. Now we are using solids today. Right. That makes a big difference because you don't really have to worry about whether or not your fabric so is So solids are more user friendly. I just much realized. more like, user friendly. Did you see friendly. the light bulb? Ding! It just popped in. Okay. Yeah, great. Because um that's another common occurrence is people will sew their fabric on and then flip it out and realize that they've got the wrong side right. out. So let's right not over confuse in. everybody at home. If they were checking it to be in its home and it were a print, it would be print side up right it would now. Be print, print side, side down. down. Okay. Because thank you. your the, what you're making faces towards your cutting mat. So all the pieces are print side down you. against the paper. Thank you. Okay, yes. so if you're doing prints at home, the print is away from the paper. Yes. Thank when you. When you're putting thank it you, in you. its home, got okay? It. It's now facing down, it's in its place. Okay. We've got it there. We're gonna flip our paper back and flip that seam allowance out that we just cut. And we have a nice straight line here, so we're just gonna go ahead and line up with it. If we didn't have a nice straight line there, we would use our add a quarter and put right. it on and clean it up. Okay. And we make sure we're in our home, everything fits, and we line up. And okay. now you have to transfer this to the top. Okay. So you're gonna lift it out and lay it right on top where it was. Got it. And you gave yourself distance on both ends for your seam allowance. I model. did. Okay. Now if you have a piece that just Let's do this again. Barely fits in its home. Like say this angle is cut off and so, or mm -hmm. it comes in this mm -hmm. direction, so it's not gonna work. A little trick, it's really easy. Once you've got it laid down in its home is just to take one pin and mark the edge. It's very simple if you can get I've, the pin. I've in. dulled the tips of the pins just cause I knew you were gonna try this. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> You make sure it lines up, and that way you can pick it up, you can uh, move it around. It. it doesn't matter if it accidentally fell on the floor okay. or if you've shifted your position. Because you were so accurate in your placement. Because you were so accurate in your placement. Okay. Awesome. And now you know exactly where it goes. So Rob, how many pieces of fabric do we have? Two, and paper. Are you ready to sew? I am. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna sew, we're holding them together in place. Okay, I get to you, sew? You do. And I'm sewing on the line between A1 and A2. Now yes. tell me, and I'm gonna sew down here through A3 as well, does that you line are. matter? You wanna go at least a quarter of an inch past. Got it. Because that's your seam allowance. Okay. And you wanna also 
tack at least a quarter of an inch out past the end of that line. Got it. And you also did something special to my machine. I did. I okay. changed your uh, stitch length. Yes, you did. So we took your stitch length down all the way to a two. It's a little different on every machine. Something I do to test is right. do a little test run. Okay. If you can still get a seam ripper in between the stitches, that's how tight you should be. Okay, but tight enough, and we want it tight because we want to be able to easily tear the paper away when we're done. We're, e we're easily per Yeah, it'll self-perforate the paper so yep. that the paper just falls away after the whole thing is put together. Am I ready to roll? You're ready to roll. Okay, here we go. And we are not back stitching, you said earlier. No, we're we are not. Because the next time you add a piece of fabric on, you'll be closing that seam with your next stitch. Got so it. So you don't need to back tack. Got it. And I'm going to come all the way off, and I can hit my, seam, my thread cutter, though. Yep. I love that. Okay. Okay. So how do I do? It's on the line. On the line. That's all you need to be able to do to foundation paper piece. Uh, we talk about beginner patterns and right. how beginner patterns say must be able to accurately sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Right. You don't even need to do that. No, because it, the, the quarter inch is created basically either it's before or later. Yeah. You okay. just need to be able to sew a straight line. So now when you go to the other side, this is a very ta-da. Uh-huh. And there's your seam. Okay. That's not too exciting yet not too exciting yet. Piece one okay. is in its place where it's supposed to be. Piece two is in its place where it's supposed to be. Okay, and I can see that. press this out. Got it. Was that iron hot enough for us? Yes, it Might is. have been goofing off a little bit over there. Okay, cool. It's all ready to go. Perfect. Doesn't look like a lot yet. Not yet. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> and you know me and my coffee. What's next? What's next? What's, What's next? next? Yeah. So our next piece is A3. Okay. Because one, two, three. Okay. So where would the line be that you're going to stitch in between the pieces you already did? Right there. That's right. And I'm going to use white fabric. And you are going to use because white fabric. Because I'm creating the A3 piece. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the very first thing we're going to do is cut our seam allowance before we even start. Okay. Can you show me that? Yep. I'm, I'm not quite so following. So I like to take a thumbnail here and hold it on these stitches to pull your paper out. And that's why you stitch at least a quarter of an inch back. You want that to stay in place. Okay, and the paper ripped a little bit. That's not a nope, big deal? No, it's not a big deal at all. Okay. Your paper, you're gonna tear it all out eventually and it does tear a little bit and that's completely fine. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna take our add a quarter ruler. Is the bottom important or no? Just the where we're working. Oh, yep, I, 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 okay, I see it, I see you it. See it? And so we're on our line. That's mm -hmm. gonna be our next stitch line and we're gonna fold our paper back and that's why we tore those stitches away just a little bit. Press it out, and... Now you can slice your quarter off. And this is where you get these beautiful seam allowances oh, inside. No. What are you Sorry. doing? I was uh, <laughs> uh, goofing off. I was trying to be safe. <laughs> trying to be safe with your rotary cutter over here because you're focused on this, and I took the blade off. But I put Breaking it back on. Things. It's easy. So now we have our seam allowance already cut for right. our next pieces. So A3 is going to be white, so okay. we just need to grab another piece of fabric. So that's not do big you want to get tricky? Okay, that's not big enough, okay. I'm scared. Okay, we'll go bigger. How's that? <laughs> yes. From my original fears of paper piecing. That one is definitely gonna cover. I see that. So we would place it right side down. Okay, this is awesome. Make sure that it's in its home. Right. And then we're going to flip back and line it up on the on the edge. Okay. Again, we're using a straight lined piece so we don't have to cut that seam allowance, but we can check it again. Doo, doo, doo. It's a little paper, so hold it in place. Mm -hmm. It obviously covers, mm -hmm. it's huge. So I'm going to mark where it goes again to make sure that we're centered in the right space. Right about there. This is why I never use pens. Mm. To be honest, I usually use like an ink pen. <laughs> because a it's, little because dab. it's in your seam allowance, so it doesn't really it's a great show. Pen. Yeah. So I'll just use an ink pen and mark it. Perfect. But, you know, that scares some people. They're like, what are you doing with an ink pen near your fabric? I'm right. That's like, fine. So <laughs> now, because we've done that, again, we can pull it up, we can move it all over the place, and we know that it's gonna go back into the correct spot. And you're not gonna use the glue stick this time. No, There's no need. only on that very only first, on first piece. Only the first one, okay. So you've got your paper, you're holding it in place. Okay, fold it over, ready? I'm in front of the machine. I think I've got it. You've got it. I got it. I'm gonna make sure I've got all the layers not folded underneath themselves. I'm gonna start a quarter inch back of that seam at least. Are we ready? Ready. You feel good about my work? I know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna straighten that seam as I start going through there. And you, since you've done the fold, you should be able to see where a quarter inch away from your line is along the fold. Okay. 
Okay. So we've got that cut there. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, flip it out. And then you press and then trim. Is that the yep. step? Because you want it pressed so that it's nice and crisp before you trim That's it right. off. Okay, that makes sense to me. Press. And so with all of your patterns, or most paper piecing patterns, but of course yours because you've just kind of taken this beginner step and the scrappy concept all put it together yeah. with your... She's got an engineering background. I love that. <laughs> uh, so from here, we would just keep building this all the way out, right? Yes. Um, and then we're going to assemble the rest of the parts and pieces. And then we're going to assemble the rest of the parts and pieces. Got it. Like in this case, since we have like a lot of extra off the side, we right. know this is our last piece. Right. We can leave this hanging here or okay. we can also trim it off so that... Kind of a rough cut to your yes. seam allowance. Whittling, is that what we call it? Whittling. So yeah. we're going to whittle that off. That way we don't yeah. have to worry about it being in the way. Got it. And then we've just got two more pieces, four and five. Okay, so we've just sewn, Rob sewn the final seam, and we have taken our templates and trimmed all of our edges. So what you want to notice here is I've left the quarter inch all the way around and used my add a quarter, add a quarter ruler yep. to mark all of these off. It looks like I missed that one a little bit, so that's perfect. We're going to go and just shave that up ever so tiny bit, and everything is even now. Okay. So we're going to lay these pieces in order so you can kind of see... Um, I have pre-made these two pieces, A right. and B, or right. B and C, to finish out our logo. Okay. And we're always going to be looking at the back. Now, the reason that we're looking at the back is because this is where all of our instructions are and tell okay. us what to do. Sure. We're going to go A to B and B to C. And are you going to leave the paper in while you join the two seams? I am. Okay. We're going to leave our paper in. As soon as we join this seam together, that is the first time that we're going to remove part of our paper. Oh, so you therefore also don't build the entire quilt and then sit there for a a week well, pulling all do. the paper. Let me show you. I'm like, no, you do. <laughs> no, 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 And this no, no. is why we have children, so okay, the children can tear the paper out. Right. <laughs> Smaller fingers work do. better for that kind of skill. Or That's all we're saying. how I justify watching television at night, but right. also working. Right. On the <laughs> clock. I'm tearing paper out. Okay. So when I'm looking at A to B, the thing that I'm going to notice here is not whether or not these edges match. What really matters is that right. this piece right here lines up. So right. this is the line I want to focus on when I'm matching them up. Now, you put them right sides together. Here's our A and B, right sides together. So what is it that you're looking at at this moment? Because I know when I'm matching reverse directional angles and we're getting a quarter inch seam allowance, my brain plays tricks on me. So, so tell everybody what your eyes are seeing, okay. please. So the first thing, you really don't have to pay attention to the angles. You just have to pay attention to the markings on your paper. Okay. Okay. So don't overthink it. Just follow okay. your paper. Now, if I'm going to go through and I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to put it through that point. Got it. Okay. And then I'm seriously just going to poke around until I find the exact spot. Oh. To line them up. Sure. Okay. And will you leave that there while? I will leave it there for a minute. Okay. But. For me, like I was saying, these outside edges don't matter as much. What matters right. to me is where the white matches up in this corner right here. And that's what we were looking at. Got when it. we look at it, it's how this matches to that, which is right there. So I'm going to poke through there and find my spots okay. on my paper. And do you really do that when you're doing your paper piece? Or really have you gotten until your eyeball is no. good enough? Okay. I really do that. Um, because that's a good trick even though that's you're on the paper know. and it should all hold in place, it still shifts a little. Like fabric sure. can still move. And all I care about is that point. Yeah, I so badly want a stapler right this second. That would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think pulling staples would be much fun. No. Though. So I just leave, I honestly leave that pin upright, okay. just like that in place. And I just let everything else fall into place. And I don't worry as much about whether or not this point and this point are perfect. Okay. I only want that point to be perfect. Okay. And I can start sewing with that pin in there? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you just leave it upright. It just kind of marks your spot. Got it. And you're just going to sew through your whole quarter And I'm still starting off the whole quarter inch, yeah. and this is my seam allowance And your whole here. right side edge should match, you know, right. as long as all that matches up. It looks like it's good. Yeah. And so as I start to stitch, because I don't want to scratch up my machine and now stuff, I can start out. to pull that pin out. Yep. Cool. Okay, I like that. Of course, we haven't opened it up to see what happens yet, but I have absolute faith and confidence in you, Violet. <laughs> hey, with a name like Violet Craft, right, you got to get this kind of stuff dialed in. This is great. That's your real name, by the way. It is. I love that. I married into it. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. So How'd we do? I didn't marry him for his name. Right. <laughs> He'll never know. That's right. So now we fold it over. Whoa, it's perfect. And it's perfect. Oh, Woo! I love it. Nice. Good job. <laughs> 
So this is actually the first place that I will tear some paper. Okay. Um, Can in you show us pattern, a little bit of that too? Yeah, okay. it doesn't matter as much in this pattern because you're not adding things to the right and left of where you've just sewn. Right. But if you have a more complicated one and you are going to be adding things to this side and this side, then you can start to get some paper tucked into your seam allowances. So if you were to add a piece here, you'd have a little piece like tucked in there. So the only thing I remove are the seam allowances right after I sew them. So you're leaving the printing of the actual template in place in case you would need it for alignment or whatever And because else. it's still, yeah, you're gonna need it to align other pieces, other right. templates, and also it continues to hold that paper in or the fabric in place uh -huh. so that it doesn't shift around. Yeah, because this kind of sewing work was originally done so that we could stabilize our fabric, sew all these ridiculous angles with all kinds of different fabrics. That is right. The first one I goofed around with actually had some batiks, which are really dense kinds of fabrics. And we also had some cotton rayon blends, which were really uh, loose woven fabrics, yeah. really movable fabrics. And so paper piecing was my only option. And I actually used a little bit of muslin in mine for a uh, traditional foundation, and it made it a little easier for me to see my seams and stuff. But I like all the tricks that you've shown us here I as like well. I like the paper, and um, I get a lot of questions about whether or not you should use a very specific foundation paper piecing paper. Right. A lot of people like the finer weight papers and like the newspaper right. style. I actually prefer a basic copy paper because I like the super stiffness. Okay. Especially when you're making a 60 by 60 foundation paper right. piece quilt, like right. the Lion, it holds everything in place all the way out to the edges. Wonderful. And it really holds it flat so that nothing moves. That is awesome. So I like the firmness, but you know, everyone has their own feel. So right. if you try it and it's what works for you, use it. Right, right. Yeah. Now the muslin so was neat because I didn't have to remove it, but I certainly wouldn't have wanted to transfer a ton of different templates. Like for the, the, the lion, it would have taken me yeah. 10 times as long to create that. Um, I know people that use uh, wash away stabilizer. Right. And they will print their templates on wash away stabilizers. Oh, they wash they can it. wash it and they wash it away. Well. Or leave in stabilizer. Right. Right. And then you don't have to tear it away. It just makes it a really firm, heavy quilt. Right. So now we've got... Okay. B and C. Fantastic. So we're going to follow the same concept. What All matters right. to us here is that we're going to get these white, your needle lined up. Uh huh. So when I flip it over, I'm going to stick a pin okay. into one of those corners. And we left the thread out of the needle for you all at home so you could embroider it in, you could machine quilt it in, you could couch it in. These are all terms maybe we'll cover eventually on man sewing for you here. So yeah, we thought it'd be fun to have the needle, but you can thread it yourself in any way you want once you get your pattern I think free motion quilting it in would be really cool. I think so too. <laughs> okay. okay, so we've got where one spot marked right. and our pin goes straight through. All right. um, a lot of times when people mark a spot like that, they'll then turn their pin, you know, and have it come up the other side to hold it in place, that actually shifts, shifts that bottom layer of fabric. And so that's why straight I straight up and down it. is really, you've been really? here before, you've done this. I've been this. here before. Yeah, okay. Straight up and down. And then <laughs> nice. you're ready to go. Thank you. Looking good. I like the way that's all set. Do I like the way that's all set? It looks like it shifted. Make sure your right sides are all lined up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it. And dialed in. Here we go. The grand finale scene, pulling the pin. This could be my most successful paper piecing experience ever, Violet. <laughs> Not my first, but my most successful by far. How do we do there? Oh, nice, nice, nice. I love it. Fantastic. Looks pretty good. Pretty darn good. And so this is where I'll tear away another okay. piece. Awesome. So it's done. It's done. But before we completely finished let's talk about tearing the rest of that paper out okay yeah give us okay. a couple quick tips because and then we'll uh now at this send point now that it is completely done yeah um you're going to want to pull all these papers out okay and one of the things that's really good once you've pulled one edge piece off well that completely releases the other side from your stitches i saw you had a nice little pinch though as you yep, got started i do okay. i'll take and i'll just put a fingernail on it or something and then you really can just tear them off. And then once that one's gone, if you just give it a very slight little tug, oh sure. It'll just pull right out of the other side. Oh, look side. at that. Tear it away. Oh, that is awesome. So you just start working from where you were at. Yeah. Coming all the way across. And come all the way across. Anything else we need to know about paper piecing? No, we did it. Awesome. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> Violet craft. Queen of the paper piecing, you've got like to that. check. Yeah, <laughs> Two little crown. I got my light bulb. She gets her crown for the day. 
You've got to check out her fabric <laughs> abstractions, patterns, they are incredible. Violet, thank you so much for joining me here on Man Sewing. Awesome. You're wonderful. Thanks for letting me do your logo. Give me a hug. Mike, <laughs> try not to spike the mics. We'll see you all next time at Man Sewing. <laughs>